Hello friends, I hope your day is starting off well. If this is your first time here, my name is Kim and I study immunology and neuroscience at the University of Toronto. I make videos related to science and lifestyle. On this platform, I want to connect science to your everyday life and make contents that people may relate to. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning about science or myself. I'm sure many of us have been affected by the current social atmosphere both mentally and physically, but staying well and having a healthy immune system is incredibly important, especially at times like this. Before I start, make sure you comment and like this video because your support means a lot to me. Okay, so first, I will give you some context about our immune system to make the connection to today's topic more apparent. Just bear with me and I promise I'll get to the point. Although our immune system is predetermined by genetics, but it is largely shaped by environmental factors throughout development. Most of your immune cells are found in gut-associated lymphoid tissues. For now, just think of it as your gut. Within our body, we have something called the gut microbiota, which is composed of microorganisms such as bacteria. We know that the gut microbiota is responsible for educating and interacting with the immune system and more and more research have shown that changes to the gut microbiota is related to specific diseases. Our diet being one of the environmental factors has a substantial effect on the gut microbiota. Unhealthy diets often leads to dysbiosis, which is another term that describes imbalance of microbial community. This biosis is often linked to chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases, metabolic dysfunction, cancer, or even neurodegeneration. When I first learned that the function of our immune system peaks around puberty and starts to level off as we age, I became really interested in how to maintain a healthy immune system. So to speak, even though I can't change genetics, I can change how I live and what I eat, you know, by intervening the environmental factors. Can I delay physiological deterioration or even stay healthy for a longer time? Okay, so we're finally here. You might be asking what food and why did I start cutting down the consumption of such food? So I started to cut down saturated fat and refined sugar intake. These are common ingredients found in westernized diets and processed food. First of all, westernized diet alters microbial composition and it reduces microbiota diversity. Diversity is a good thing. If microbiota diversity is reduced, fewer bacterial species colonize your gut. Another way of thinking about it is that fewer manpower is present in your gut to stabilize the interaction with the immune system. Both human and rat studies have seen changes to bacterial content after switching into a western diet. Change in gut microbial content leads to persistent and low-grade inflammation. Inflammation itself is not a bad thing because it is essential for your survival, but excessive or chronic inflammation can often tax your immune system, um, weakens its performance, and leads to disease. So far, I mentioned why continuous consumption of high sugar or high fat is bad for your microbiota. You might be asking, what am I supposed to eat? There are actually food options associated with healthier microbiota status. So fruits and vegetables are great because they are rich in dietary fibers and there are also prebiotics that support the growth of beneficial intestinal microbes. Another thing I like to throw into my diet is fermented products such as yogurts, kimchi, and miso because they're rich in probiotics, which is linked to many health benefits such as enhancing immune system, gut health, and even mental health conditions. Second thing is to choose healthy fats. Proportionalize your omega-6 and omega-3 because in Western diets, omega-6 tends to be overconsumed and omega-3 intake is low. So, you know, eat your fish and walnuts because omega-3 is associated with lower levels of inflammation. And the last thing I would recommend is whole food diet or even plant-based diet. You know, cut down the processed food and even eating out too often. When you try to make your own food, you can control what goes onto your plate. Whereas in processed food, scientists have suggested that chemicals or ingredients added during your food processing might promote inflammation. 
If you're allowed somewhere in this video, that's totally okay. There's just one important thing I want you to take away from this video is to realize an intrinsic relationship between healthy microbiota and your immune system. The bottom line is that everything should be consumed in moderate portion. I'm not trying to encourage you to overconsume certain food, and it takes persistent and consistent practice to see noticeable effects. Anyways, thank you for staying to the end of this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Turn on a notification bell if you want to receive my latest updates, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye!